We welcome you to our service today, you who are joining us online on this recorded service. This is May the 9th, and we continue to worship God even during this time of not being able to gather together, but at least we can do this, where you can join in our service through your phones, your iPads, your computers, whatever else you're using. So thank you for joining us. I mentioned last week that we are having a study by Zoom, uh, which will hopefully start on May the 20th. It's going to be on N.T. Wright's book, God and the Pandemic. And uh, the book will be available if you're interested, um, just so I know how many to order. If you're interested, please let me know. I'm McPhee at simpatico.ca. You can reach me there. Just let me know if you're interested in joining us. So thank you again. Join with us in our prayers and our sermon today and our music. Sing along if you can. We're happy to have you with us. steadfast love covers the whole earth. Let us sing joyful praises and join all creation to worship God's holy name.
our prayer of confession today, please join with us. And following that will be uh, the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen for you to follow. Holy God, the power of your love is beyond our understanding, and the breadth of your compassion seems to be without measure. In Jesus Christ, you have met us in the midst of life's joys and challenges, and that you have shown us what it means to love and be loved. You have entrusted us with the great commandment to love one another as Christ loved us. Receive our prayers and our praise today, and through the power of your Spirit, we ask you to draw us closer to you and closer to each other as friends and followers of Christ, our risen Lord. Merciful Lord, we confess we often find it difficult to love others. And though we intend to do your will, sometimes our priorities lead us in other directions. We seek our own security before the well-being of others. We fulfill our own desires rather than act for the common good. And we often justify our own interests and fail to live out the gospel of Christ. In the name of Christ, we bring these prayers that he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Hear the good news of the gospel of Christ. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power. And he prays for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and we are made new by God's presence and Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. We have two readings today, both from, uh, well, one from John's Gospel, chapter 15, and one from the Epistle of John. John 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you, and greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life you are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose, choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. And then the epistle of 1 John, chapter 4, verses 7 and 13. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, 
but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, Lord, we come to you through these scriptures that you will help us as we seek to understand them and to apply them to our lives. May your spirit open these words to us so that we may follow you more completely. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. We are at home in God's love. I grew up in a pretty small town in the east coast of Scotland. And when I was a teenager, I was very lucky because I had access to three movie theaters for free. You see, my father was a barber and in his shop, he would advertise the three movie theaters and what was playing that week. And so I was able, as a teenager, to go to all these films, and I probably saw most of the 1950s films that were ever made. Because in those days, they used to show you two movies on, a fe on, a, on, a dis on one night. You'd get the main feature and you get another feature, plus you got a cartoon and the news. It was a, 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 a many full package. One of the films that I watched in 1950, which I still remember, was a romantic classic called Love is a Many Splendored Thing. Remember that movie? Maybe I'm showing my age. <laughs> well, I still vividly remember how enchanted I was, even as a teenager, maybe I was a romantic, with watching the romance between William Holden and Jennifer Jones on that high hill in Hong Kong. The song in that film, the, the lead song, brings back vivid memories of how emotionally compelling this was for millions of people. And so even for me, a young teenager. It's hard to imagine, right? But to be honest, I still remember sitting in that darkened theater, almost crying. I was, I was so enchanted. Here are some of the words. Remember the two? Love is a many splendored thing. It's the April rose that only grows in the early spring. Remember that song? Love is nature's way of giving a reason to believe in the golden crown that makes a man a king. Oh boy. And then, of course, the high and windy hill in the morning mist, two lovers kissed and the world stood still. Then your fingers touched my silent heart and taught it how to sing. We you still get movies like that? Love's a very powerful word in our language. It's a powerful idea that has increasingly influenced our culture in the 21st century, particularly in the 20th century and into this new century. And especially through film and television. Love today is most often described in emotional and sentimental terms. And if there's any day in the year other than St. Valentine's Day, when we celebrate love, it's Mother's Day, which is Tomorrow, right? This is the day we set aside for our mothers. It's a different kind of love from all those past ballads that we have known. But it's still a love that reaches each one of us. And lots of cards and gifts 
and lunches and family, well, maybe not family gatherings this year. But we, they will make every attempt to get together. And mothers will be recognized for their sacrifice and their dedication to their families. And however imperfect our mother's love might have been, and I think of my own mother, and yeah, there's lots of imperfection. In spite of all that, we still remember and treasure their memory. I was thinking of another song, actually. I was thinking of this song. I watched the video of Cyrone, uh, Celine Dion singing My Heart Will Go On from the 2007 DVD Live in Las Vegas, A New Day. And it's the theme song from another very famous movie, The Titanic. It was the signature, so her signature song, actually. And it sold over 18 million records. Here's some of the lyrics. Near, far, wherever you are, I believe that the heart goes on. Once more you open the door and you're here in my heart. And my heart will go on and on. Love can touch us one time and last for a lifetime. And never let us go till we're gone. I won't try to sing this. Beautiful, eh? Love is celebrated as an emotional feeling between lovers. It celebrates the fact that love is seen as a matter of the heart over the head or the will. Every day we listen to tales of so-and-so that's in love or out of love with his girlfriend or boyfriend, prominent bankers, politicians, movie stars, indeed people from all walks of life are in the news constantly because love has burned them. Where would the music industry be without it? Where would movies be without it? It's the subject of most of our popular songs. And it seems love and our need for it is written into our DNA. But let me just say, all of this, wonderful as it is, is miles removed from what John is saying or in the epistle of John. Miles removed. John's gospel makes clear that a different kind of love is at the center of the universe. God has shown this different love to the Son, Jesus of Nazareth. John reminded us, remember way back in the early part of his gospel, God so loved the world. John reminds us that true love originates in the very being of God and is expressed most powerfully in our Lord's life, death, and resurrection. In other words, love in the Bible is an active word. It moves God to do something about our situation, to resolve our situation. God acts. And so in the Bible, in a sense, love is a verb. It acts. It's not mere sentiment. God's love expresses itself through an act of will, not of emotion. But in Western culture, it is emotion. And the past century shifted this balance even further towards emotion and sentiment through all these songs and all these movies, that's how we perceive love now. And so you see this in the growth of love songs and the films that celebrate love as eros. But for the Bible, let's be clear, for the Bible, love can never be reduced to emotion. In his innermost being, John says, God is love. Wonderful to think about that, eh? 
We may have all kinds of confused notions of what God is like, but we won't go too far wrong if we begin with the idea that God in his innermost being is love. I like to picture God as a gentle, loving spirit, caressing creation, bringing it into being, like a mother hen watching over her chicks. That was an image that Jesus gave us, remember? When he's looking down over Jerusalem, he says to the disciples beside him, often I long to gather your children like a hen, her brood safe under her wings, but you refused and turned away. That's a wonderful picture of God, isn't it? Like a mother watching over children. So Jesus teaches us a new way of being human that flows out of his example and his sacrifice. He tells us very clearly, make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in, what I, in my love. That's what I've done. I've kept my father's commands and made myself at home in his love. That's what I want you to do. Many years ago, <clears throat> very famous Christian, C.S. Lewis, wrote a book, which I read many years ago, but was very helpful, called The Four Loves. <clears throat> Any of you know that book? Well, in that book, Lewis outlines four types of love. Affection, friendship, erotic and spiritual. Storage, philia, eros, and agape. Three, four Greek words. And so he looks at these different kinds of love. <clears throat> he looks at familiar or affectionate love, the first one. He looks at friendship, philia. He looks at romantic, Eros, and then finally, spiritual love, agape. Each of these types of love is legitimate and healthy. But Lewis argues that ultimately, it will be healthier for us to engage in each of these loves through the prism of the last one. Part of our problem today, let's be clear about this, part of our problem today in society is our willingness to pursue well-being through the first of these three, the first three of these. Isolated from faith and love of God, our pursuit of friendship, eros, and affection has distorted our relationships and often left us frustrated and alone. And so the path to human health, Lewis would argue, and well-being being outlined in Jesus' teaching here and throughout all of the New Testament, is found in a depth relationship with God. That agape love, that spiritual love, through which all the rest find their place. And so this is always viewed in the context of obedience and willing compliance to God's will. While we may squirm a bit, when discipline enters the picture, <laughs> when we want to discuss love, it's central to Jesus' teaching. Here's how I would translate the verse that is before us. This is my command in order that you may love one another just as I loved you. The one little Greek word, I want to do a little Greek exercise here. The one little Greek word used here, Iva, I-V-A, means in order that, not just that. This is not a command to love. It is rather asking us to follow Jesus' example 
and do the sort of things, you remember Jesus washed the disciples' feet in that upper room, to do the sort of things that Jesus did <coughs> so that we express this kind of love to our neighbor. If we are to be at home in God's love, we are to follow Jesus' example of how he treated other people. We must comport ourselves toward others in societies, in our families, in our social interactions, as Jesus did in his society. In other words, this spiritual love, agape, is expressed through acts of will, acts of kindness, generosity, empathy, sympathy, support for the sick, imprisoned and the weak. And by so doing, we will love one another through these actions. We are not forced to love one another as if it was God's, Jesus' command, we've got to do this or else. No, rather by living out his way of life, we express that spiritual love to others. Think about his attitude to women. It's so contrary to society's norm. To organize religion to those on the fringes of society, to outsiders in general. Think about how he responded to these kind of people. He rocked the boat <laughs> with his actions and his attitude toward the status quo of his day. He upset the religious authorities. He upset the political establishment. After all, he was crucified <laughs> because he did. And he upset the smug satisfaction of the rich and the power. In short, by following his example, we essentially keep his command to love one another. And this draws us into the act of sacrificial love and kindness toward those in need. Being in the circle of God's love is to live within the flow of God's acts of redemption and God's desire to build a whole new world. So on this Mother's Day coming up, let's express our appreciation for our mothers, yes, who nourished us, directed us, loved us, supported us, even as adults. And love, hopefully, and hopefully this is what we have learned afresh today, is grounded in the love of God. We're not commanded to do this. It simply is an expression of what God has done in our lives. We reach out. And out of this spiritual connection we have with God, our lives express all the generosity and sympathy and empathy to all the others, other people. And since love is ultimately a verb, not a feeling, not an emotion, then let us love others through our actions, is what Jesus is saying to us. It opens to us a life of joy and meaning, Jesus told us. He says, these things I've spoken to you in order that my joy may be in you your joy might be fulfilled. May God help us to be these kind of people where love is expressed in our relationships with other people. In the name of Christ our Lord.
Please join with me in our prayers today. There will be an opportunity during the silence, silent time for you to bring prayers to God that are on your hearts. Lord, we thank you for the signs of resurrection that are all around us, showing us that life is stronger than death. Give us the grace to recognize and embrace the gifts of new life that your love makes possible for all of us. God of home and family, today we thank you for our families, especially for our mothers and grandmothers. We are grateful for the, their love and their attention to our lives, their hard work and their deep hope that they have cherished for each one of us. <clears throat> We honor before you every mother and grandmother and great-grandmother. We thank you and pray for all of those who have felt isolated from their families in these challenging months of pandemic. God of compassion, today we thank you for our friends and relations, for the neighbors and fellow citizens who help to make our lives fuller. Thank you for the smiles that we have shared and the helping hands that have been offered and the commitments that have been honored. And we do pray for all of those around us who are facing particular challenges today. We remember them in the silent time to you. Today, Lord, we bring to you Noah, whose young body has gone through so much pain and suffering. We pray for the doctors, surgeons, and nurses who treat him over these coming days. We remember Kim and Dan, his parents, and the girls, whose faith and strength has been an inspiration to all of us. Bless them with your healing and with your peace. <clears throat> we continue to pray for Dave and for Pat, that your healing and grace will be with them. And I remember to you, Lord, um, a friend who's in palliative care and the family that surround him today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and restore our hope and our love for you and for one another. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
Thank you once again for joining us for this service today. Now may the God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.